You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. Cancer cells and immune cells have a lot in common. Um, they use a lot of the same molecular pathways. Um, they use a lot of the same resources, a lot of the same growth factors, and they like to feed the same way. Um, immune cells love sugars, as do uh, cancer cells. Um, so, you know, um, restricting sugars is not necessarily a good thing because you're going to affect your immune cells as well as your cancer cells. So uh, what cancer cells do is they've evolved to hijack the immune system and steal the resources that the immune cells use. So uh, what they do is they have about, uh, about, we believe there's about 14 different pathways, signaling pathways that uh, cancer cells can uh, inact inactivate the immune system. So what happens when a cancer starts growing, the immune system, uh, the T cells, um, that kill the tumors uh, will go into the tumor and they will go to investigate it and to break it down. And then the tumors will use one of their tricks, one of these 14 little pathways, they'll in disable this pathway and um, the tumor cells will then become inactivated. And then the tumor, or sorry, not the tumor cells, but the immune cells will become inactivated. And then the tumor cells will uh, steal their resources. So immune therapy, uh, is a class of drugs that are designed to reactivate those pathways that have been inactivated by the tumor cells. So right now we have drugs for, uh, we actually have a new one that's just coming out right now. So we have drugs for about four different pathways. Um, those pathways are called the PD-1 pathway, program death one. And that's the most common pathway uh, for immune therapy. So when typically when you hear about immune therapy, it's almost always about a PD-1 drug. There's many companies making PD-1 inhibitors. Um, there's also the CTLA-4 pathway, um, and there's a drug a class of drugs called CTLA-4 inhibitors. We have about two or three drugs that target the CTLA-4 pathway. Uh, there's another pathway called EDO, um, and then there's a recent pathway that we're starting to use now called the LAG-3 pathway. So um, we're working on developing drugs uh, to re, uh, restart the immune system uh, against tumors. And so these drugs are working very much like vaccines. So uh, we've seen some incredible results from immune therapy. Uh, we're, we're actually the first company to ever use uh, CTLA-4 inhibitors and PD-1 inhibitors in patients in Canada. And uh, you know some of those patients are still alive today. They were on death's door. They had literally months to live. And you know a few of these treatments just totally eradicated their cancers. Mm -hmm. So when we see responses from immune therapy, they're typically what we call durable long-term responses which is a, a science and a medical way of saying a cure. So durable long-term, we don't like to say cure, um, but we do uh, like to use the term durable long-term. So um, there are certain features about immune therapy that we can look at through genetic testing. Uh, we call it the lottery. Um, if you have something called high tumor mutation burden, in other words, if you have more than 10 to 12 mutations per million base pairs of DNA, uh, then you have something called high tumor mutation burden. And that means you have so many mutations that your tumors look very different and therefore um, inactive or reactivating uh, certain types of um, uh, pathways that have been inhibited like the PD-1 or the CTLA-4 can get a significant response against your tumors. Um, there's also other pathways called MSI, which refers to microsatellite instability and uh, mismatch repair uh, protein damage, um, which is a pathway that repairs um, mismatched DNA base pairs. So um, we'll be talking more about those specific pathways when it comes to treatments. So I just wanted to mention something about immune therapy and what an amazing new tool it's been. Thank you for watching Seatome TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.